Hello everybody! In this video you will learn what are all the 144 perks your operatives can have. When you inspect a person in Watch Dogs Legion you can see their skills, utility items, vehicles and weapons. The skills are the most important you need to learn, because they can help you or make the situation worse while doing specific activities. Plus, some of them will help the whole team. The utility items are your extra tools like gadgets, uniforms or instruments, some of which are really powerful and useful while others are made for roleplay and get some fun. Next we have the weapons that are really important because anything you will do involves some shootings, so having the right weapons based on your playstyle is the key to accomplish your mission easier without risking to die. Plus, if a character has a specific type of weapon as a perk, you can equip there any other weapon of the same type you already unlocked. In order to unlock it, you need to recruit the person that has the weapon you like. Then, by editing the weapon slot, you can move it to any other character that can handle it. The last but not least are the vehicles some of which are perfect for some run away from police, destroy anything you see on road, drive as fast as you can and other activities. So let's see, any single perk can be found on the people you will find around, in order to help you to have a better understanding on which character to pick and what other you have to avoid. Let's start from the skills. The first category is the aviability. This includes the priority care, good patient, triage and prior injuries perks from the injury subcategory. The first will decrease the time of all your operatives in the team will be unavailable in case they will be injured. The second periodically will release some operatives from the hospital without waiting the whole injury time. These first two are passive and will be triggered automatically if you have any operatives with these skills in your team. This means that you need to have them in the team, but you didn't need to use them at all. The next will decrease the injury time as well, but only for the operatives that has the perk, while the last one opposite to the previous will increase it. As a result is the only one to avoid. Then we have the arrest mitigation that, similar to the previous subcategory, will decrease the time your operatives will be unavailable. But this time is related to the arrest that happens when your operatives will be killed by the law. That includes the police contract, bailout, light sentence, and on probation. The first will decrease the time for all operatives to be in jail. The second will release earlier some of your operatives. The third will decrease the jail time only for the operatives that have it, while the last one will make this time longer. As a result is the only one to avoid. Then we have the increased death probability and it includes the death wish and doom it perks. The first will increase the chance for your operatives to die when injured or arrested. The second can trigger that while your operative is inactive. In these two particular cases, the death can be triggered even while you're playing with the permadeath off. As a result, it is better to avoid recruiting any people with these two perks. Next, we have the Make Money category. Starting from the abilities of category, we have the Takedown Stiff, that will steal some ETOs when performing any takedown. That is useful to make some extra money in case you prefer a non-lethal approach. While well, the next one is the Crypto Skimmer that will steal some ETOs every time he hacks someone. That is great to have on a hacker operative. The next subcategory is Bonuses, where you can find the signing bonuses that will give you some money when you hire the person for the first time. Then we have the skilled investor that will increase the money you will gain from any source. That is useful in case you have one of the previous perks as well. To finish with the make money perks we have the shopping category, where we can find the loyalty card and vehicle detailing perks. 
that respectively will decrease by 12% the prices of the clothes and vehicle skins you can buy. Considering that these bonuses will extend to all operatives in the team, it's really useful to have both if you consider spending some money on them. Back to the make money perks, we have uh, the shopaholic that will randomly buy some pieces of clothes. And the gambling addict that sometimes will make a few bets that will give or take some of your ATOs. The shopaholic can be useful if you don't want to search every single shop for all the clothes, considering that some of them will be bought by the operative. This is also a good opportunity to check some of the clothes to see if you like to wear them and change your most used character appearance. For the gambler, I personally think it's a good perk because it seems that long term he ends up making more money than losing them. Time for the next category that is hacking. Here we can find immediately the special one that is viral hacking. This one will propagate any hacking ability to the other targets that are enough close to the first one. And in order to trigger the spread out, you need to hold the hacking button. This is particularly useful to use in case you have also the crypto hacker, considering that this will allow you to make a lot of money really fast. Next we have the extra hacking abilities that otherwise you can't have. The first is the shock hack that unlocks an extra hacking ability you can use on people that will deal some damage or knock them down. Then we have the drone betray hack that will turn any drone you want against their allies. This can be useful to make some combat drones stop attacking you and instead help you to kill your opponents. The last subcategory of the hacking perks is the boasts where we can find the 6G data plan that will hugely speed up the downloads of keys or data and upload viruses. Speaking about the keys that they need to obtain in order to open specific doors, with the key still you can have an unlimited range of downloading them. That allows you to run away from the locations where otherwise you need to wait before the download will be completed. Next we have the fast hacking that will shorten the cooldowns of all hacking abilities. Particularly useful to disable more drones in a shorter period of time. Opposite to this one we also have the slow hacking that will double the cooldowns of any hacking ability. Making this character the worst to have if you need to hack frequently. Next we have the damage category that starts from the damage mitigation where we have the Explosive Shield that decreases the damage you take from explosions, followed by the Glass Cannon that will boost the damage you deal, but will also increase the damage you take. Then we have the Physically Fit that decreases the damage you take, while the Frail will increase the damage you take, making this last one the worst to have and the perk to avoid. Then we have the Drunkyard subcategory, that will also unlock the possibility for your character to drink some beers at any moment. This is because the bonuses works only when you are drunk. And they are the tough drunk that will decrease the damage you take and the hard drunker that will make you deal extra melee damage. To finish with the damage category we also have the extra faction damage. In fact, in the game there are two major evil factions that you will fight and they are the Albion Organization and the Kelly Gang, for which you can find several characters that want some vengeance against them, that will increase any damage they do to the NPCs of this specific faction. The next perk category is the combat, where we can find the first subcategory as the stealth approach where you, the good one is the light step that will improve your stealth by reducing the noise you do, making it harder for the enemies to hear you coming. While there are also some malus perks as well. One is the flatulent that will make uh, your character fart often, that attracts enemy attention, making it harder to not be noticed. Similarly to this one, we also have the hiccups that work the same way, but this time instead of farts, he will hiccup. 
Then we have the next ability subcategory that will unlock special combat abilities of these operatives. The first is Gun Kata that will instantly kill the enemy using your gun if you melee them with any weapon in your hand. To finish we have the combat roll that allows you to roll in fights evading part of the damage you take when you get some shots. Particularly useful in combination with Gun Kata allowing you to roll enough close to the enemy to finish him without taking too much damage. The next category in our list is melee, particularly useful when you need a good fighter for the Bear Knuckle League. So let's start from the damage perks, where we can find the Grappler, that will make massive damage when you break enemy guard. Plus there is also the Moth Guard, that will protect you from taking melee damage by decreasing it. Then we have some boosts. The first is Kapao Punch, that will speed up the knockout animation, making it easy to execute them when you do some group fights. While the other boss is negative and it's called Low Mobility. This one will prevent you from dodging, sprinting and taking cover. Plus it also decreases the speed you can do some parkour moves. This will make you in particular an easy target in melee fights. As a result, is a pair to avoid at any cost. The last subcategory are the new abilities, and it includes the Shockwave Strike, that will deal away damage and knock back your enemies every time you break guards or execute combos and knockouts. To finish, we have the strong counters, that will massively increase the damage you deal in the next melee attack after you successfully dodge an enemy attack. Time for the last pair category that is a special one, where we have the immunity subcategory, composed of an anti-chase perk that will prevent police drones from chasing you, anti-shock suit that will prevent you from taking damage when an enemy drone will shot an electrical bullet at you, then we also have the bandana that will grant the gas immunity mainly needed against some special drones that will shot at you only gas grenades that will make get you out from the cover. The next special subcategory is the one that unlocks new abilities, where we can find the evasive driving. This one just decreases the time requires for the police to lose tracks of you. The other ability is a bee swarm that when used will spawn a lot of bees that will attack a specific target. The last special perk subcategory is the Notoriety one, that includes the Rally Cry, that will spawn free allies that will fight on your side. Also useful to find some good new recruits. And the famous perk that will make some people stop and look or make some photos at you. This one is needed in combination with some tools we will see later on in the video. Since all of this, it's time to discuss the utility items that your characters can have, starting from the Drone Summon category. The game is full of drones flying around the place, but some of them can have a specific utility, so summoning a specific drone can help save time, searching one that suits your needs. The first we have is the Cargo Drone. This one is the only drone you can claim on, in order to later on reach specific locations you can reach otherwise, or require some parkour. Also you can pick up cargo you can find on top of several roofs, that you can max drop down on your enemies. Considering that this will be seen as an accident, it won't even trigger the attention to you. Then we have a shock drone, that has a special combat ability that allows you to shoot an electrical grenade that will knock out any person or destroy the biggest part of the drones, followed by the CTOS, parcel fox delivery and news drones. These three are really fast and agile, allowing you to explore specific places, scout for enemies or potential recruits in forbidden locations. The next category is the uniforms. The forbidden locations have a specific uniform that allow you to explore the places without being shot immediately if spotted. In fact, if someone saw you, they will try to see your identity, but if you will be fast enough, 
They can't understand that you are an intruder. This is a really nice way to explore some locations without need to fight at all. In the game, the most useful is the Albion uniform, considering that the biggest part of the law and military locations can be freely accessed by an Albion agent. Then we have the police uniform, that allow you to access only the law agencies like police offices and prisons. To finish with the law locations, there is a special uniform needed only in the Buckingham Palace, and it is the army one. In fact, in the front of Buckingham Palace, you can find several soldiers you can scout with a drone to hire later. In case you explore the place using the uniform, you even get an achievement by doing so. Next uniforms are the social subcategory. I speak about the construction worker and medic uniforms. Those will allow you to freely access respectively any location under construction and hospitals. The last uniform is the Clan Kaylee one, that is the only one that can be used to freely explore the locations owned by the criminals. The next category is the tools, that starts from gadgets, where we can find a spy watch that allow you to use a special hacking option on your enemies that will jam their weapons. This one will stop them from shooting you when spotted that is really powerful when you try to keep the stealth approach without risking burning your cover. Another gadget in the list is my favorite, that is a pocket watch. This one will allow you to hypnotize any enemy that will immediately switch sides and will kill any of your enemies he finds in the area. Really useful to clear the area and at the same time get a good diversion that keeps away the attention from you. Then we have the dive bomb that will summon a small drone that will fly to a specific location, then it will explode. Really powerful ability to use against other drones to one-shot them or against vehicles if they are used by your enemy as a cover. The last gadget is the clear the way that will hack all vehicles you see in order to make them drive out of the road, making it easy to escape the police or deal with the traffic. Another way to escape the police is to use one of the hide tools. The first is the sweeping, that when you use it will make your character clean the floor or the road. If the police didn't see you before you used this tool, they will come to your location, but they didn't attack you thinking that you are an another innocent person. Another similar tool is the statue pose, that will even make other people that will come near you to donate some money while you are losing track of cops. The last tool, but not the best, is the megaphone. In case you will use it, your character will call to war to force civilians around you. The problem is that they won't use any weapon, but fight with their hands. Therefore, if they get attacked by any weapon, they will surrender or will run away instead of helping you. The last category is the hobby tools. Mainly the main reason you want one of them is because they will give you some revenue by staying in the same location. Mainly it's good to enable in front of any metro exit, when you are afk, to make some money in the meanwhile. The hobby tools are similar one to another and can be divided into instruments and the misks. The first we have the harmonica, banjo, saxophone, trumpet and guitar. While in the misk we have the beatboxer, dancer and the pan handler. I found out that the less profitable is the pan handler, while the most profitable is the guitar and the statue pose from the previous category. It can even be boasted if the character has also the notoriety perk. Time to discuss the weapons, some of which once you get the recruit with the weapon you can retire them but keep their weapons and use them in other characters that can handle them. Starting from the melee weapons, where we can find the light category that includes the lead pipe, crowbar, studded truncheon and button. Those will increase your melee damage and change your stealth knockout animation as well. 
Then, similarly to the light category, we have the heavy, that includes the wrench and the hammer. They deal much more damage compared to the previous category, but it makes you less agile as well. Considering that the melee weapons can't be replaced, collecting them all has no point, because they can be switched with another you own. Then we have the pistols, where we can find the common one that can be unlocked once you get the first and switch between any character that can use pistols. Where we can find the P9 semi-auto pistol that deals moderate damage and has a lower recoil. Then we have the Rare Rex 357 that deals massive damage but has also a huge recoil as well. To finish there is the legendary Desert Eagle that is the best one that has better damage and recoil ratio. In the pistols we also can find the silenced version of the P9. But this is a unique weapon, therefore can be unlocked and used on other characters. Then we have the SMG category. They are good fight weapons with good damage but high recoil as well. Where we can find the lethal one that includes the Vector .45 ACP and the MP5. The last one can be rarely found also with the silencer. That is the best weapon in the game for a silent approach. Next is the non-lethal version of the SMG, where we can find the LTL MPX and the MP9. The first is a normal SMG that won't kill your targets but knock them out. The second as well is non-lethal, but differently to the first will shot only 3 bullets at a time in order to help with the recoil. Then we have the classical rifles, that differently to SMG deals massive damage and has a low recoil as well. Starting from the semi-automatics, we have the P300N8 that will shot one bullet at a time, making it one of the most precise to use, followed by the MCX that is the same gun but non-lethal version. Then we have the full automatic rifles including the popular AK-47, followed by the English version G-36, that is the most commonly used by the Royal Guards. In case you like the rifles, but prefer a non-lethal approach, you can use the LTL Goblin. At this point, it's time to speak about some heavy damage weapons, starting from the shotguns, where we have the M590, that is the lethal shotgun that how you can expect from this type of weapons deals massive damage but require you to get close to your enemies. If you like this weapon but prefer a non-lethal approach there is the M1014. That is the same shotgun but uses the non-lethal bullets. Speaking about the heavy damage weapons, if you like to play like a Rambo the best are the light machine guns. It is similar to the rifles from the damage perspective, but has a lot more bullets in their magazine. Here we can find the M249 and the Negalev. They are similar to one another. The only difference is the reload time that on Negalev is slightly faster. For an extra, in some rare cases you can find a perk called Arsenal, that will allow you to equip two different custom weapons. If you want something more powerful and more impressive, there are also some grenades in the game, starting from the one that requires a launcher. For the little version, we have the GL06 and the APGL. The difference between the two is that the first, thanks to its longer barrel, have a higher range. The non-lethal version is the LTL APGL that despite not being lethal will explode drones and cars, while if you shot it on the ground or on the enemy it will generate an electrical field that knocks out other enemies in its effect range. There are also a few grenades that have to be thrown by your hand. The first is the tear gas that will generate a little gas screen that will kill any enemy inside. In the meantime they are dying, 
they will also be out of combat. Similarly to the tear gas, if you only want to get out of combat your enemies without killing them, the solution is a smoke grenade that will do the job and if you use it near you, allow you to pass through enemies without being noticed. While if you just want to stun them and see what creation you can make with it, there is also the paint bomb. To finish we have some special weapons that are unique to a specific category of characters. Starting from the one that is here just for fun. Where we have the nail gun that is a standard weapon on the constructor worker. But be careful because it is a little one. Next fun weapon that this time is non little is the pine ball gun that not only knock out your enemies but also paint them with a different colors in the process. Next we have the really useful weapons starting from the LTL dirt gun. It has a moderate range and will shot a soporific dart that will knock out any enemy instantly if you get them in the head and in a few seconds if you shot any other part of the body. The next is the LTL stun gun that will knock out any enemy but it requires you to get really close to them. The last special weapon is the overcharger. That isn't the best to use on people considering its low damage output and only have one bullet in the load. The most efficient use for it is on drones that will get massive damage if shot with it. The last type of perks you can get are the vehicles that aren't the most important perks in the game to even have but it will save you some time if you get a good vehicle to spawn whenever you want. Plus, some of them have a special use as well. Without speaking that you can just spawn a specific vehicle you need or want without searching it around, then switch to your main operative and take the vehicles that won't disappear when you change operatives. So, let's start from the utility vehicles. Where you can find in the special subcategory the spy car that allow you to use the clock to become invisible and arm then shot missiles useful to destroy drones and cars. The other special vehicle is the getaway car. This one can pass through the getaway without allowing the police to track your new location. Then we have the work section where you can find the ambulance and the double deck booths that are useful to use in order to climb across the high walls without using the cargo drone. Another work vehicle is the modern taxi called the Elec Motor Guide. That is one of the fastest cars in the game that also has a good resistance. The last utility vehicle are the vans that has nothing special and can be used as well as the cross obstacles tool. Then we have the motors. Considering that London is a metropolis, the traffic will be really dense. What vehicles is better to skip traffic as a good motorcycle or scooter? This is also the must in case you want to do some delivery side quests. Anyway, the motors can be divided in three subcategories. The fastest one that are the Sayonara S1 and the Kurahawa Torer. Then we have the medium speed one that is the Kurahawa Zentura and Kurahawa Spur. While the slower are the Agostinia Motobene CS that is a scooter. And the Parcel Fox scooter that is so slow that the biggest part of the deliveries that requires it to be fast will be failed. Then we have the sport vehicles that are the most beautiful and faster, but will take more damage. Here in the fastest versions we have the Obscuro Ultra 8, Bogen Haikai Evo 4 Sport, The Valle Vu 7 and Marlot MK3. Then we have the medium speed one that has a better resistance. When we can find the Adler Leo Firelights that is the same car we get when calling for the spy car. And the Targ 536TT. Then we have the slower sport cars that have bad acceleration but decent maximum speed and great resistance. And they are the Bogen Haikai Evo 4 and the Peyron Ardor. An alternative to the sport cars we have the city cars. 
that has a warp speed and acceleration, but in exchange it offers a really good resistance. Here we have the standard version that includes the more reload MK6, Telus Maxera, Cavalli LSE 800, Astera Prime AV, Talus Solace and DMR DM50. While there are also the city tanks that can deal and receive massive amounts of damage. Those are the station wagon group that includes the Landrock AL7, Landrock Conqueror Sport or standard version and the Talus Solace Estate. After the CD vehicles we have the mini series. That is a small and compact vehicles, some of which are really slow, other fast as the sport one. The slower one are the standard versions that include the Bogen 50, 25, 25 Sport, the Valley Marquest and the, the Piron High Life. While the sport version of the miniseries are the Bogen 50 Sport, Nakahawa SX825 and its faster version Nakahawa SX825 Sport. To finish we have the Piron High Life Sport and the Tylos Vita Hot. Now that you know everything you can find on your potential operatives, it's time to get out there and find the best for every single task you have to do.